hello everyone. So, uh, from the last two talks, you learned how gravitational waves were predicted by uh, Einstein's theory and uh, how complicated it was to detect, but still it was we managed to detect it, and that was a big achievement. And uh, as you know, it got a lot of recognition from various fronts and especially also from public medium. Uh, so, in this uh, lecture, I am going to uh, give you glimpses of what are the cut signs that we are expecting in the time scales of few years to few decades and how uh, India uh, Indian scientists have been contributing to this effort from the beginning and what uh, potential we have to contribute uh, in the uh, longer run and of course, there will be uh, LIGO India. So, this is the uh, just to summarize the picture that what we was detected and announced earlier uh, last year was the merger of two black holes and uh, which formed a bigger black hole and the uh, signals in red and blue were detected in two detectors in the US separated by 3000 kilometers. So, the chances are almost 0 that this was generated by some other kind of fluctuation. Now, Indian scientists have been involved in predicting the signal the first part of the signal and the last part of the signal everywhere uh, in the central part where the uh, it involves numerical relativity which was a more recent thing. How to use this uh, predicted signal to extract to make a detection from extremely noisy data and how to and later lately how to improve the instruments to for be, uh, to get better and better sensitivity in all the aspects of the detection indian scientists have made uh, significant contributions now and that is a big achievement but we don't stop there this is just the beginning and it will go on so uh, first let me introduce some of the science uh, aspects that what we are going to do in the next uh, few years so although we have detected the black holes and as Ajit mentioned that the, uh, the black hole masses were more than what people generally expect. Uh, we have, th there is no, I mean we have very little idea about how these black holes formed, okay. There are several possibilities, but we are unable to say at this point that how exactly they form. Uh, and are all the uh, black holes in the universe very massive or it was just a selection bias that we detected a massive one or just a statistical fluke, okay. Then what are the distribution of their masses, uh, of the masses of these black holes and their spins? Uh, how are they specially distributed, say in angles and in redshift? So then coming to the neutron stars that how massive they can be before they merge into uh, collapse to a uh, black hole. These are all very interesting questions. If you read about astronomy, then you know that these questions are very intriguing and none of them, none of these questions have any uh, concrete answer right now. Uh, and then do uh, more massive black holes uh, uh, exist. So, to address these questions, we will need a many detections uh, and that we hope will happen in the coming months to years because as you know, the second observing run of LIGO has already started. In the last observing run, which lasted for four uh, months, we had two detections and one candidate which we could not detect because uh, we could not uh, did not have enough control on the noise. Uh, so, uh, the detection as Ajit again mentioned uh, opens up the possibility of probing Einstein's general relativity is that the, at which limit the uh, theory breaks. Uh, previous to uh, the gravity of discovery, we did not have a strong handle in the strong field regime of uh, general relativity where it really differs from Newtonian gravity and one can uh, basically uh, find deviations, parameterize the deviations of this theory in uh, different uh, terms of uh, mass and spin and try to constrain it that and see that whether the prediction from general relativity falls within these error circles uh, which we uh, derive from the uh, data. If one of these uh, crosses which are uh, uh, general relativity predictions were outside this region, then we would say that general relativity uh, needs corrections. Uh, this was one of the uh, major things which was done in uh, ICTS, TIFR, uh, CMI Chennai and so on. And then uh, as I said, Indian groups have been playing uh, major roles uh, in these efforts, like two different kinds of tests were conducted and then when the detection was done, 
people are involved heavily in uh, interpretation uh, of the data and several other tests have been planned in the coming years which will be done with uh, the latest data. Then uh, we can learn about neutron stars also as you know they are the densest uh, visible objects on the sky visible in electromagnetic waves uh, and then we have do not have much uh, understanding of neutron stars even though they are so exotic and interesting objects they are basically soup of neutrons. Uh, when the neutron stars could merge uh, with another neutron star or a black hole because of the strong gravity nearby they basically get tormented near the end and how much they will be tormented depends on the stiffness of these stars and the stiffness in turn depends on the nuclear interactions. So, if we can detect probe this uh, uh, the probe the uh, equation of state for example, then we would be able to have more uh, uh, a, uh, more understanding of the neutron stars. And uh, depending on the stiffness, the final part of the waves, uh, you do not have to really look at the plots, just what I am saying is that basically the last part of the wave uh, uh, gets distorted depending on how stiff the star is. It, it, it either gets, if it is stopped, uh, if, they, if they are soft, then they just merge into a form a black hole. If they are stiff, then they go around for a while before merging. Okay. Yeah. Then, uh, then we come to some of the detection challenges. Even though we have detected uh, a source which was really bright and so on, it is not an easy thing to detect. Uh, for example, when the we, we uh, since uh, the data is noisy, we need the exact waveform in order to extract it from the noise. Getting the exact waveform means solving Einstein's equation. When two objects are far away, they are just going around uh, each other at a distance like planets do, then it is easy to, it is sort of fair, relatively easy to uh, 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 tackle this problem analytically. But when they are merging, that process is extremely violent and it is not analytically tractable. You need to impose numerical relativity. And that that is the time when maximum most of the energy is emitted. Now, a typical numerical uh, relativity waveform that is solving one uh, set of equations takes two weeks on 1000 cores. I mean, this number is of course a, uh, an approximate number. So, you can see how large it is and we need 250,000 templates to actually cover the whole parameter space. So, this could not be done by just simply by numerical relativity because I think the, the total computation uh, power available to the scientific community is not enough. So, it required some kind of interpolation, a complicated method which uh, uh, Ajit uh, has been involved in for a long time. Uh, this was, uh, these were the things which were used for the current present detection. Uh, then extraction of the signal even after the template banks is created is complicated because of noise. Uh, in the data and uh, it creates different kinds of false alarms. For example, if there is just noise and you are doing mesh filtering, this is the term which is used generally to find the signal, you will get all sorts of noisy glitches. How do you take th that into account? And then the computation cost because of all these complications increase rap uh, exponentially. It is very, very hard to do a full search with all the parameters at present. We do not have enough computation power. So, we have to come up with uh, analytical uh, algorithms which can be used to uh, extract the signals uh, uh, efficiently. And at Ayuka for about 20 years this research has been done how to extract data a signal a pattern from noisy data. And this was one of the key elements which was used to get the detection. But then uh, uh, the, it does not stop there. There is lot more which is going on right now to uh, for example incorporate data from multiple detectors to go to higher dimensions that means can we use spin parameters also for the search right now we cannot because of uh, the computational uh, limitations. Uh, the parameter estimation after you detect it you have to say what are the masses of the black holes and the spin. This is also a challenging problem because the parameter space can be degenerate that means it is long many combinations of these masses and spin can uh, uh, fit the data and then there can be local maximum and so on. So, there are groups in uh, ISA Kolkata and so on, they are uh, trying to develop algorithms which can uh, extract the exact parameter more efficiently. So, then the other part I said that you know when we uh, uh, search for different patterns in the data with different parameters, one or few would correspond to the real signal 
most of the other 2000 and uh, 250000 would correspond to wrong signal wrong values so you have to somehow say that which one is right and which one is wrong one of the major problem that arises is because of the glitches in the data instrumental artifacts okay so there are different algorithms which one can put to isolate them not necessarily throwing away the data but isolate parameter spaces which needs to be searched for the real signal and rest of it uh, can be uh, thrown away and then if we can identify the glitches uh, beforehand then we would be able to even extract it at some point okay so recently we used uh, let's say machine learning techniques and uh, got very good results so i'm not getting into the details of this just giving you flavors of how uh, uh, what are the challenges now and how indian uh, 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 groups are contributing to it now i'm come to the uh, later part that uh, i said that there are different things which we don't know about the black holes so one of the things fundamental things that we do not know about this merger which was detected is where it is on the sky and this is because we had only two detectors operating at that point when this merger happened and if you are familiar with the gps technology for example you know that when there are two detectors you can uh, localize something on a ring on the sky okay and that is exactly what has happened for the ligo detector so the ajit already showed the uh, this pattern on the sky which is the error circle for uh, ligo it is it, it is almost like you can fit in 2000 moons uh, on this it is so big on the sky and it, it is essentially a ring but since the, de uh, the uh, detectors were not omnidirectional there is a part of the ring which you see essentially you can see it is almost like a ring on the sky now imagine the hypothetical situation that a detector in india ligo india was operating when the detection was done then the error circle would become i'm sorry uh, would become this small that that small orange patch you see that is like almost 100 times smaller than the actual patch so that would significantly improve the accuracy of uh, detection like three gps satellites do uh, and that is a, one of the major motivation for ligo india and we not only three we actually needed network of detectors across the globe this is because the detectors are not working most of the time i mean uh, not all the time so uh, at least 20 percent of the time detectors are down for upgrades and so on okay but for every detection you want at least three to be present so if you multiply this probability 0.8 into 3 uh, 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 0.8 into 0.8 into 0.8 you see the probability significantly drops to some 60 percent or something so you need four or five detectors to be operating to for every source to be located on the sky and then uh, because of other geographical reasons which i am coming to india is a very good place to uh, host a detector so the thing is that so right now we had two detectors in the us this is the map of the world seen from the pole north pole okay you see there is this h and l these are hanford and livingston detectors okay which operated due for the detection and then there is a fargo detector coming up in uh, uh, italy uh, fargo detector is already there but it will uh, start operating at the advanced configuration uh, probably later this year so that is marked by v now if you put a detector in india you see the baseline distance that is the light travel time between the detectors uh, increase significantly and also the number of uh, baselines double that gives you a large network to point to accurately uh, determine the position on the uh, position of an event on the sky okay so this is this is one of the big motivation for ligo india but there are more okay so basically this is a plot which uh, which were uh, uh, pretty popular so on the left side on the upper left side you see the error circles on the sky with the uh, ligo and vargo detectors and they are pretty big but when you have ligo india then the error circles reduce significantly and then the duty cycle improves that means at least two three, three detectors working at a given point increase that the sky is uniformly sampled also improve because the detectors see some directions better than the other or those non-uniformity sort of get sorted out because of all this and most importantly for indian uh, from the indian perspective bala uh, already showed you uh, this slide that a detector in india will give significant opportunity to indian experimentalists to get involved in cutting edge science within a mega science project 
So people would be exchanging knowledge and this will give us a platform to go beyond. LIGO India is not the end of the story, it is just the beginning again from the experimental point of view. And I will show you a little more things later on that what else the people have started working on already in the international community. And hopefully after LIGO India, the Indian community would be able to uh, uh, contribute to those efforts. Okay, and government of course recognized it and uh, there was quite a bit of support from the top level to uh, move LIGO, LIGO India pretty fast and you can see that Prime Minister himself was involved in many of the uh, meetings where uh, MOUs and things like that were signed. Uh, so what is the status right now? Uh, so I, uh, my institute Ayuka led the site selection activity, uh, several uh, uh, 39 uh, sites were uh, followed and then some of them were shortlisted. Right now there is a primary and alternative site which has been uh, recommended for uh, LIGO India and several surveys are going on uh, at the site. You can see that uh, the lower bottom uh, plot uh, shows the uh, terrain map which was obtained from uh, ISRO. So if uh, for one of the sites and these are the kind of details we already have. Uh, then there was a tier 2 data center which was set up at Ayuka. Uh, it is one of the uh, Indian, major Indian contributions to the international gravity wave community. So the gravity wave community is always uh, looking for computation power because the searches cannot be done right now with limited computers and uh, so uh, this will serve a fraction of that. Uh, it's, uh, there are several details involved but uh, the important thing to notice is that the facility is being used by uh, gravity wave community from India and abroad and also uh, we have a uh, building infrastructure ready for a bigger uh, data center, the TR1 center which will be needed for LIGO India operation. Uh, the next thing is coordinated Indian follow up of gravitational wave events. We would, if we can see one gravity wave uh, event, let us say a Newton star merger in gravitational waves as well as electromagnetic observatories, we will have far more. Uh, uh, understanding of those systems which were almost unknown at this point. So uh, there is a dedicated 75, uh, 70 centimeter uh, telescope uh, which would be installed, uh, which will be functional actually operational later this year. This effort was mostly led by Varun Valerao at Ayuka and IIA. Uh, Ayuka then also the existing observatories in India can sign up for uh, follow up program with LIGO. The Ayuka has a 2 meter telescope which has signed up and then Astrosat uh, CZTI instrument has also signed up for such uh, follow up. So but then there is activities going on to encourage Indian astronomy community to sign up for such uh, uh, follow up events. It takes a small fraction of telescope time but the returns are pretty good. Uh, this is called the tar target of opportunity observations and that is uh, going on and then also there are plans for dedicated telescope for future time domain astronomy so called. Yeah. And then of course the astronomy community uh, to encourage the astronomy community several sessions were organized in the Astronomical Society of India meeting uh, in the last two years. So here is the list of uh, the activities uh, for LIGO India right now. So the MOU between uh, DAE, DST and NSF has been signed on Ma March uh, 31st, 2016 in the presence of the Prime Minister. Uh, then key project management structures have been set up for LIGO India from the top level. Uh, LIGO India site selection process has recommended a primary site and the site acquisition and development plans are getting uh, uh, initiated. Uh, then, then of course the detector is going to come from some components are going to come from the US but we have to build the 4 kilometer long vacuum okay. It is not, a, not an easy thing. So there is lot of effort going on to do that. Even after you get the instrument, the laser, the suspension system, just to install them it is pretty challenging thing, okay. If I just uh, uh, give you a, a broken laptop, I do not think you will be able to fix it so easily. This is just a joke of course, it is much more complicated for in that case. So first to get the uh, instruments, assemble it, understand the noise uh, characteristic of that, these are all very complicated and not everything is going to come uh, just like that. For example, the suspension system has to be done in India because we need cables which are basically silicon, basically glass which would be holding the 40 kilogram mirrors, okay. 
this is done by you, you, have, you have seen the, how uh, uh, the glass is heated and like bubbles are made and so on. It is a much more uh, of course uh, sophisticated version of that you put a laser and then pull the glass and then you get a very narrow thread which would hold these heavy meters. This thing has to be done in India and there are several aspects for that preparations have been started okay to train people get some equipments and so on uh, in IPR and RRCAD these, uh, these uh, 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 operations are going on for vacuum and uh, laser. And also there is progress on data center front. And last but not the least, so as I said uh, LIGO India is just the beginning. We do not want to just install the LIGO India like that at like advanced LIGO sensitivity and then stop there. We want to uh, upgrade the instrument as the other instruments in the world are uh, uh, up, uh, being upgraded. We want to get involved in the future activities. For that we need to build a big experimental community. There has been uh, a series of meeting which is uh, being organized at IUCA and the response are overwhelming. There are 40 participants in two major meetings from 20 institutions, okay. They are signing up for different tasks which are there. I mean I cannot get into the details of what exactly is necessary. I will show one example later on and then people would be basically taking up those tasks work with the international community and deliver the results and this will be one of the key steps towards building the experimental community. So there is enormous enthusiasm all around to take part in LIGO India and go beyond. So one of the examples as I said I will give is about Newtonian noise because I am involved in that. So uh, you know when the light, we are trying to detect measure distances the, the, between the mirrors at the effective this precision of which is less than the size of a proton, it is like that small. So any vibration can shake things up, right. Now there is the mirrors are hanging from a platform, the platform is uh, on the ground, there are several layers of uh, passive and active isolation which uh, keeps the mirror from not uh, moving because of seismic vibration. And that has worked so far pretty well even though we want to move beyond uh, that uh, low, uh, improve the lower frequency sensitivity which is limited by the seismic isolation. But then there is gravity. When a wave is passing by, if you see the, you can you see the image, you can stop the vibration on the, on this uh, suspensions. But each of these matter perturbations is directly coupled to the mirror through gravitational coupling, right? This is the Newton's law. That is going to create a tiny perturbation in the mirror which can, will also become important in the next generation detectors. So we have to somehow get rid of this, uh, this uh, noise. But how would you do that? You cannot isolate gravity by anything. There is no Faraday cage of easy sort. So what we have to do is to put, put an array of seismometers on the ground, get this noise and we know that this noise is going to be correlated with the effect on these mirrors. So we pass it through some adaptive noise cancellation techniques and we will be able to remove it. Right now we have no idea, we cannot measure this noise, so we do not know how strong it is also. But we hope that this kind of schemes will uh, work and this is a huge amount of task because even to estimate how much noise is there, you need to understand how wide to put the seismometer. That is like a uh, it iterative business. So these things we are already part of and hopefully some things will come up. So up to this, uh, so why we want to do this? For example, we want to improve the low frequency sensitivity. Why? Because the binaries which are merging spend most of the time in the low frequencies because you know when they are uh, uh, far away, they are slower in uh, the rate of merging is slower. So if we can monitor that part very carefully, then the masses can be determined to very high accuracy which will help us in testing general relativity for example, okay. So but all these things I am saying were mostly I have been focused on the binary detection and the parameter estimation, estimation and so on. But being a new field of astronomy, we also need to see how we are going to find the unknowns, okay. For unknowns by definition, we do not know the phase. We have to rely on techniques which will say, which will use our very good knowledge of the instrument and see if there is some excess power coming from some place, okay. So I will talk about two different uh, 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 things uh, here, short term and long term uh, uh, unknown signals, how do we probe them. So one of the thing is bird searches. So the binary is when two black holes merge, they create huge amount of, uh, they emit huge amount of power in a very short duration, okay. That is also a bird source. 
But since we know the waveform very well, there are more optimal methods. But suppose we did not know the waveform. We did not know how the waveform looks like or our un understanding is wrong. That even though we think this is the waveform, it was not the case. Then how do we detect them? So we create this kind of time frequency plot. This is time and this is uh, frequency and what is plotted is power in, uh, in uh, uh, the strength of this color is power. So and then we see whether the same thing occurred in two detectors separated by uh, 3000 kilometers and more. In fact, in a network of detectors, if every detector gets a small excess power of a certain pattern in the time frequency curve, then we can be very confident that this is not, this is probably something gravi uh, of gravitational origin, but we do not know the exact signal, okay. And that will be one of the ways to probe the unknowns. And uh, groups at ISA Trivandrum are uh, uh, involved in this. In fact, this analysis is pretty fast. The first detection when uh, the first black hole merger was actually detected first by this pipeline and that was in 3 minutes, okay, because it was pretty strong, but it, would, it was not true for the other ones because uh, the, this kind of searches work when there is a burst of power, not when the power is distributed over a longer time. Now the other method which uh, I work uh, pretty heavily is uh, for unknown sources which are persistent. Most of the astronomy is actually about those sources, electromagnetic astronomy. For example, when you see a star, you do not know the phase of the electromagnetic waves which are coming from the star, but you know that there is a constant amount of power statistically there in the star, okay. So how to look for those sources? Basically what you do is to correlate data between two detectors and try to see if there is a power excess because even though the source is random, the same signal is coming in two detectors. So when you correlate, there will be a peak a small excess in the correlation when there is a signal versus if you for example time sheet the data by unphysical amount those correlations would not be there. So this is how we try to figure out uh, uh, if there is a long term excess in the data and plus you can use this method to make a sky map also. I will not get into the details but these are kind of like earth rotation synthesis images imaging which is done in radio astronomy like in GMRT. And then Ajit already mentioned that this method will be very useful in getting, uh, in probing the history of black hole formation. That how the binaries form, there are several models and we cannot pinpoint right now. But if we integrate in the, throughout the history of the universe, different models predict different background, confusion noise, okay. And that is order of magnitude different uh, uh, when you uh, do this theoretical estimation. So if we can, in, in addition to detecting the individual sources, if we can also detect a stochastic background like this, we will, do, we will be able to have much more control on the uh, much more better understanding of how the black holes form in the universe. Are, is there, are there only one channel or two channels, different uh, formation scenario? Do they form in isolated regions or do they form in let us say dense uh, star cluster uh, environment, all those kind of things. If they form in two different uh, regions, is there any qualitative difference between them and these kind of things. And hopefully in the next five years of uh, advanced LIGO operation, we will be able to detect a signal like that if our optimal understa uh, understanding of the uh, average uh, model is correct. Okay, I will finish in like uh, few minutes now. Now getting into slightly uh, distant future. Uh, so you see that the final aim, a major aim is to understand the universe, how it originated and so on. So we have this big bang model which was it is not just the big bang, it has lot of details. This model was formed after several years of understanding of observational cosmology and we have a self consistent model right now. But there is a phase in this model in the very early stage when the universe had to expand exponentially and a significant amount of expansion happened during that time. This is called cosmic inflation, that phase we have to put in by hand in order to explain the data and we want to see that phase. There is no way you can see that part in electromagnetic wave because the universe was so hot and dense that photons could not travel straight at that time. Photons became uh, relatively free when the universe was 400,000 years old, okay, which created the cosmic microwave, uh, which is the cosmic microwave background. But 400,000, uh, the inflation happened in the first second of the universe. So we have to use some other means. So there are two ways to see that. One is gravitational wave and other is neutrinos which can penetrate this dense environment and come to us, okay. And there is lot of effort going on to see the 
first uh, that uh, uh, the, that signal primordial gravitational wave and uh, I do not know if you can read this plot it basically there is a frequency axis a horizontal axis frequency it goes in orders of magnitude basically in different bands people are developing instruments to see to probe this background and not only that so even though the chances of uh, detection of that background with the existing instruments is fairly low there is a there is enormous amount of effort going on to develop next generation detectors i mean this may sound like uh, 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 fantasies like these are the names are like this primordial inflation explorer big bang observer then desi hard interferometer gravitational wave observatory but the thing is that and these these have enormous sensitivity i will show you a plot landscape plot to show where things stand the thing is that even though these things sound too futuristic the work for this have already begun all the pictures which have the designs and so on are from scientific papers and documents so it is even though it is futuristic we have to start almost now in order to catch up for ligo it took 30 years of effort before a detection could be made okay so futuristic does not mean there is no work now it has to be it has to start right away for example this is the uh, the next generation gravity of detector is called the einstein uh, telescope okay the designs are being finalized but site surveys have been done all over the europe to see find a good suitable site this will be an underground site uh, telescope which will be uh, like 100 to 200 meter underground and the arm lengths could be 10 kilometer so these are not finalized things but on the other hand efforts are going on heavily on uh, each of these aspects then there is the uh, laser interferometric space antennas called lisa so because of funding situations the lisas the uh, launch date keep fluctuating but this has enormous amount of the science case is enormous we would be able to see uh, okay let me play this thing so what is proposed is that three spacecrafts will follow the earth and exchange light laser light and then by measuring the uh, the doppler effect we would be able to detect supermassive black holes okay super there are it is believed that supermassive black holes are there at the center of the galaxies and smaller black holes are falling into it they are going around it and at some uh, point uh, merging so those things we would be able to uh, see with this and again this is not a science fiction so there was enormous success with what is called the lisa pathfinder mission the results came last year uh, so the, the pathfinder mission checked some of the key uh, technologies which will be used for lisa and there was some set goals that if pathfinder uh, so noise capabilities reach this level then we would uh, think that it is good for lisa lisa is uh, physically possible practically possible and it did 10 times better the noise level of path lisa pathfinder was 10 times better than what was projected so this is at that level so i hope that lisa will uh, lisa will fly soon uh, be definitely much before i retire okay so this is the uh, sort of landscape of gravity wave uh, detectors and sources i don't think you can see it but just to say that the, the everywhere there is effort going on and we are right now only at near the audible frequency range but the detectors are being built all over so okay so this is my summary slide so i'll just read through the so the first detection marks the beginning of gravitational wave astronomy detection of large number of compact binaries promise interesting science like the distribution of black holes neutron star science etc etc uh, and uh, we hope that many of the detections will happen this year after the, in the second observing run of uh, ligo and worldwide effort is going on to improve the sensitivities of the detector build a network of detector and so on ligo india activities are also taking shape pretty rapidly and indian community is ready to work on ligo india to contribute to it and taking it beyond and much more excitement is expected in the coming uh, decades so i stop here okay and